Hello everyone, welcome to this engineering channel in YouTube where we do a lot of simulation. If you missed the last video where we talk about joint efficiency values for a lab patch repair in a search science, here I have left the link so you can check out the material. In this video, I will show you how to review briefly uh, the failure mode for the search science on their original construction uh, when it suffers general metal loss, local metal loss, um, we will see in a scenario where we incorporate data from actual measurements from inspection into the FPA model. And finally, we will see the failure mode of this lab patch repair with this joint efficiency volume for elastic plastic and elastic analysis. And finally, we will see uh, how uh, optimization may uh, help us to make a final decision. I know it sounds many things, but we will see it briefly, shortly, and easily. So, if you are a time passionate about these simulations design, we will have a formal training in Spanish with the University of Guanajuato. But if you are uh, an English speaker, you can contact me directly uh, through this email and see if there is an opening for, for that uh, course in English. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and let's get started. Okay, this is the storage tank. Uh, it has a diameter of 63 feet, a height of 42 feet. Uh, this is a typical configuration for, uh, for, uh, for the oil industry. We will consider in the assessment uh, seven courses, where the uh, course number one is this one, at the lower part. And course number seven is this one, at the upper part. Uh, we will consider hydrostatic load, dead weight, related to the roof weight and the shell weight, and the seismic load, okay? Um, now, uh, if we look at the geometry, here is the, here's the geometry with the roof, with the beams, and here are the results. When we look at the uh, plastic collapse, we start to increase the load slowly in order to identify the response of the, of the geometry and the model. At the end, we need to reach certain values defined by the, by the code, A ASME and API, this is the limit, uh, like in this case. Here you have the the equivalent stress, you have the deformation, and you have a positive answer, right, from your model. Here, you are above this value, and that's okay. What happens when you have general corrosion? Okay, let's see. When we have general metal loss, we consider uh, thinning through time. It means currently I have more thickness in my tank than I will have in a couple of years. So we consider mode one with uh, actual inspection with these thicknesses. And we will consider mode two uh, based on a corrosion rate of six MP wide uh, in a uh, next inspection of six years with these values of thickness. So currently in a load versus displacement, uh, we, have, we, we are at the very limit, okay? From the requirements of design. But in mode two, well, there is a gap here. So it means we won't be able to um, support the seismic load, hydrostatic load, and dead weight. Okay, now let's move on to local metal load. When we have local metal loss, there are, there are two general ways to consider these inshell elements. You can um, define a section like this and this, 
and define, uh, for example, the thickness of three millimeters. But on the other hand, you may use the information from actual um, measurements and from inspection, like this, and use it in your model, like this. Here we have uh, the, the imported thicknesses, and here we have the, the results. As you can see, um, there is a little improvement between the, the assumption of the entire section with three millimeters and the imported values. It does not comply with the AESM and API requirements, but it's, a, it's an improvement just to consider. Now, let's see uh, what's next with the lab patch repair. When we consider lab patch repair, we need to be consistent in the FEA model. So there is corrosion uh, and there is a, a, a zone free of corrosion, like, like in this case. But also we consider uh, round corners like this and a filled weld between the lab patch and the shell. Here, for example, we have the thin section, the corroded section. Let's see how the results were for the elastic plastic analysis. Okay, for the elastic plastic assessment, it was not possible to achieve convergence at 42 feet. And in fact, because of this value, this lower value, uh, the seismic load was not considered in the assessment. The maximum field height was around 35 feet. Let's see how the stress distributions were for, for the for the stress tank. Here we have the equivalent uh, von Mises stress, this for a hydrostatic uh, pressure of 35 feet. Um, the maximum values are around the corner. And this is the membrane stress distribution for a hydrostatic uh, load at uh, 25 feet. The maximum values are in this um, direction. And here, for example, we can see how the plastic strains were the maximum at the round corners. Um, how, do, how, how do we deal with this? Uh, because it's, it's, it's on the uh, standard. We need to deal with this value. Okay, let's see it with the elastic analysis, how finally we solve this problem. The elastic analysis does not use penalty factors. In other words, it does not produce gelding nor plastic strain. This assessment uh, methodology uses allowable values instead for me membrane and bending stresses. It will depend on the classifications you do in your equipment and the loads that it is subject to. For this specific case, the allowable value is around 23,000 PSI. If we look at the simulation where we had dead weight, seismic load, and hydrostatic load, the equivalent stress, membrane stress, and bending stress are above that uh, criteria. So, how do we solve this problem? Into the details of the optimization process, we need to understand two things. The first one is related to API axis 53, where we have uh, these continuities like this. Uh, there is a critical length where stresses are a shout. It means you have a nominal value, but when there is this discontinuity where hub stresses increases, you may have some local increases, not that critical, but if all those stresses in average across the L value are above your allowable, then you may have trouble. So we are taking advantage of that concept and bring it here to the lab patch repair. So we expect that this length calculated for this specific tank uh, won't have um, membrane stresses above this 
uh, threshold. Okay. And the second uh, concept comes from API 579. And it is related to uh, joint efficiency treatment. Uh, when you use the method B, this is local, you uh, multiply the allowable stress by the weld, um, by the by the joint efficiency, and that that is the that is the allowable in that specific region. In other words, this discontinuity won't have a higher value than this. On the other parts of the tank, it may be okay if you have these 23,000 PSI. So if we check out the, the simulation, here we can see that the membrane stresses are maximum here at the discontinuity. And this is because of the thinning of the, of the vessel. Here you have the maximum values. Now, if we check out the, the patch, the lab patch, here we have the, the, the stresses. It's similar to this, to this figure. In general, you can see that in average, it's higher than 8,000 PSI. So where it, here it comes, the optimization process. When you use those parameters, you can do many simulations and at the end you will have a reference value. This reference value, for example, the, the surface membrane stress and the membrane stress across the, this length, you can have a profile and realize if the, if the average is higher than, is higher than the, the, the allowable, allowable value. A noteworthy feature of the magic of optimization is that using only two parameters, patch thickness and hydrostatic uh, load, it is possible to build a response surface that correlates the stresses. Different stresses in the uh, stress tank, for example, here we have a, a bunch of, of stresses. And that, that correlation can be uh, used to uh, identify the, the geometry compliant with the standard. <clears throat> At the end, the lab patch uh, recommended is one with a thickness of a half inch uh, with a fill height around 40 feet. This is compliant with the joint efficiency value of 0 0.25 and it is reliable under seismic load. Um, some final features about the advantages of using FVA in the maintenance for maintenance in, in above ground storage tank is that it can help to comply the uh, to standards when there are natural hazards like wind, seismic, snow, to guarantee a, re a reliable, a resilient structure. Uh, additionally, you can use uh, a fitness for service simulation to avoid hydrostatic testing with water, which is expensive and is not ecological. I mean, um, nowadays that we are fighting climate change, you do not need to spend thousands of barrels of clean water uh, just to gu guarantee these for um, things that have already been tested uh, under construction. In maintenance, you can use simulation. You don't need to, to test with water. And that's something that uh, uh, um, uh, regulators, uh, policy makers need to understand. This technology help us to make decisions. Um, additionally, uh, the selection of thicknesses of operational um, uh, parameters like fill height in pressure vessels, it would be um, the maximum allowable working pressure. So uh, these simulation tools can help us to identify if our uh, storage time is reliable under different scenarios like 
corrosion, cracks, distortions, fatigue, thermal fatigue. So this is a, an invitation to dive into this um, uh, FEA world uh, our, for, for applications in the industry. So that's all for today. Have a good day. And I hope you have enjoyed it. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome to this engineering channel in YouTube where we do a lot of simulations. Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to this engineering channel in YouTube where we do a lot of simulations.